Today, we are going to be comparing two of the best talents produced in Brazil. Brazil has always been known for producing great players such as Pele, Neymar, Ronaldinho, Zico, Socrates, and more, as well as also having five World Cup titles to their name. But before we see how they play in game, let's take a look back at both of their careers. First up is Adriano, also described by many as the Emperor. His career started in Brazil with Flamengo before he moved to Inter Milan for around 13 million euros. That is not small boy money at all. He was obviously not a joke as from there he quickly became one of Europe's rising talents and has also been dubbed as one of the best young strikers around. Whilst at Inter he had a loan spell at Fiorentina before moving to Parma where he scored 22 goals in 36 appearances. He also formed a great strike partnership with Adrian Mutu. Just two years later, he moved back to Inter where he would spend a total of five years. Known for his pace, power and strength, but most of all his cannon of a left foot that would later earn him a spot as the cover star on, at the time, very popular football game, Pro Evolution Soccer 6. However, from there, a massive change of events. Adriano lost his father in 2004, and from there his career started to spiral downwards as he didn't know how to deal with the loss. Following his father's death, he started to lose himself, being quoted saying he only felt happy when he drank and could only sleep if he drank. Also, turning up to training, hung over. Most of this was hidden by Inter as they needed to keep it from the press and stop the story from spiralling down. He still played on and was dedicating his goals to his father by pointing to the sky, but he was still never the same player. In the 2006 World Cup, he scored two goals, but overall was disappointing as many thought he'd play a pivotal role in bringing the trophy home to Brazil. Adriano then scored six goals for Inter on his return to club football, and it was also then decided he needed a change of scene. He went on loan to Sao Paulo, where he got caught up in a headbutt incident, resulting in a sending off, so things weren't looking good in Brazil. From there, he went back to Inter after his loan from Sao Paulo, but returned to Brazil once again, where he had much more success, scoring 19 goals and getting Flamengo their first national title in 17 years. Roma then bit the bait on that one and brought him back to Europe, but it was short-lived as many could sense the end of his career was near. From then he went to Corinthians and in 2011 scored a massive goal for them in their history as it was one of the goals that helped them clinch the title. It's clear football was never the same for Adriano after his father passed, leaving us all to wonder if that didn't happen, what could have been? Ronaldo Nazario, known to many of us as R9. He was spotted by Brazilian legend Jairzinho and recommended to Cruzeiro at a very young age. That's where he started to make a name for himself, averaging around a goal a game, scoring 44 in 47 games. That attracted R9 a lot of attention as he then moved to PSV. In his time there, he scored a hat-trick against Bayer Leverkusen, where German legend Rudi Voller was quoted saying he'd never seen an 18-year-old player play that way. With the use of his silky stepovers, lightning pace and clinical finishing ability, Ronaldo racked up another stunning accomplishment, scoring 54 goals in 58 games during his time at PSV. This did not go unnoticed as Barca came in under the management of Sir Bobby Robson and they bought him for just shy of 20 million euros. There he continued to bag more goals, netting another 34 goals in 37 games. They were all in the league which won him the golden boot and he also won the European golden shoe that year. In addition to that, he won the FIFA World Player of the Year. He didn't spend that long at Barca as his seemingly inevitable move to Inter was next for an at the time world record fee of $27 million. At Inter, he continued to score goals, winning the FIFA Player of the Year again, and also adding to that his first ever Ballon d'Or. However, it was during his time at Inter where his football was disrupted with serious knee injuries, resulting in him missing a whole season, but luckily making it back in time to help the Brazilian national team to their fifth World Cup title. As well as that, he won the FIFA Player of the Year for the third time and left Inter for Real Madrid, dubbed as El Phenomeno. There he linked up with Zidane, Vigo, Roberto Carlos and also David Beckham, as well as many more stars. He was pretty much Real Madrid's top scorer in all four of his seasons there and he left there with another Ballon d'Or as well as a La Liga title to his name. However, the injuries yet again were rearing up their ugly head. From there he left for AC Milan but he also left on bad terms with manager at the time Fabio Capello amid rumours that he dropped him due to his weight issues. He scored seven goals in 14 games in his first season for Milan in the second season, he managed just over 300 minutes though, as weight and injury issues yet again were a constant roadblock. Following that, he made the move back home to Corinthians and then later retired in an abrupt ending to his career in 2011. It might be clear based on real life and accolades that Ronaldo is far apart from Adriano, but there's also no dispute in Adriano's talent. 
However, that's not the debate we're here for. Who is the better player in the video games? Let's get into it. So first off, we're going to start with Adriano again. Unfortunately, it's not that easy to get Adriano as it is to get R9 on FIFA. We have to try and pack him. Initially, I started off to open the 900 coin packs, which give you 10 players. And I thought surely in about three, I will get the player that I'm looking for, Adriano. But a few times I was baited. I thought I got him then. Then I thought I got him again. And then finally, the man we'd been waiting for popped up in the pack. I wasn't done there though. I wanted to build a pretty good super team around him. So I also went and got Oshiman. However, on eFootball, you don't just leave the players as you pack them. You have to try and level them up, which we did. By the time we were done with Adriano, he was 97 rated and ready to go. After leveling up a few other players, we then built the side and we were ready to test him out. In game one, it didn't take long for Adriano to get off the mark. He got himself an early goal, a sweaty goal at that, but they all count. It wasn't an easy game though. We needed to call on fellow Brazilian legend Julio Cesar to try and keep us in the game, making multiple saves time and time again. Our opponent then equalized with Mane, which I didn't see coming. And then I decided to be a bit of a scumbag. I didn't actually think it would work. I put one over the top. Adriano used his pace and power and slotted it into the back of the net. He then went on to add his third goal in the game to show that he actually is a huge problem. Overall, in game one, he came out with the match ball and was too much for the opponent. Now it's R9's turn to show us what he can do. We had to keep it even and I got the 97 Trophy Titans R9. We bought him for just under 9.5 million coins, which is a lot easier to do than on eFootball. Well, I mean, if you have the coins. In Ronaldo's first game, he also got himself an early goal. So at the moment, he's keeping up with Adriano. We got a second goal in the game, uh, courtesy of Thierry Henry. Ronaldo then demonstrated some blister in pace to try and get away from the defender, which he did. He went through it on goal. The finish wasn't there though. Following that, our opponent got into our box, escaped from our defenders and put one in the back of our net. We then got another to make it 3-1. Shortly after that, it would have been nice if we had some pace and power in defence because he got through and made it 3-2. R9 played it to Henri in some build-up. We worked it out to Trent. Trent looked to kite back into Henri and yet again, we'd hit the post. We showed good signs of getting forward again as we worked it out to Ronaldinho. He played it back into Figo, onto Henri, and he had Dinho on the overlap outside, meaning one thing, R9 was in the box. Great finish. Trent broke down the right. He had R9 making his way into the box, Henri making a late run, and Ronaldo's movement made space for Henri to make it 5-3. Into Adriano's second game, and uh, we started off on a bad note. I'd given away a penalty with Maldini. Our opponent stepped up, and subsequently, the penalty was saved by Julio Cesar, still doing bits for us. We then go on the counter and surprise, surprise, who's there to finish? The big man, Adriano, into the second half and he wasn't done there. Sprayed it out wide to Dino. Dino saw the overlap and Belletti with a beautiful cross into the box and Adriano again in off the crossbar. What a beautiful header. We weren't coming out of this game unscathed though. Neymar went off injured. He pulled his hamstring. Thankfully, that wasn't the case for Adriano as he made it to the end of the game in which we won. And we even had time for a selfie between Ronaldinho, Messi and Adriano. What a front line that would have been. We went into game three and um, we won an early penalty with Neymar, which gave Adriano a chance to get on the score sheet once more. Unfortunately, I fell for the opponent's mind games and I kicked it straight at the goalkeeper. Shortly after that though, for some reason he scored two own goals and that basically voided the third game as he quit. We then went into the actual third game where we played some beautiful football. Edmilson on the ball, escapes away from his player, plays it into Adriano, sets it into Iniesta who does a lovely spin and flick. We played it out to Dino and he sees the man in the box, Adriano to tap it in and finish off a very lovely move. Unfortunately, we couldn't keep a clean sheet. We gave the ball away stupidly and we conceded what was in the end a tidy goal. Not long after that, Adriano was denied from close range so close to getting a brace. We put the pressure on with a few more chances and still didn't find a way through. In the second half, Adriano then missed an absolute sit up, which put question marks over his finishing. Neymar then showed him how it was done. And then Adriano remembered to find his finishing touch and got a very lovely goal. In the last minute, Adriano used his strength to hold off the defender and almost put it past the goalkeeper, trying to get a second hat trick. Unfortunately, it wasn't to be and that was that. Into r 9s second game and we're hoping for a greater performance. He did well in the first, but he needs to keep it up. 
We started off with a Virgil yellow card that could have been a red and put us in big, big trouble. There was a massive save made from our goalkeeper, which kept us in it. Unfortunately, we went to sleep as Czech was put in behind through an on goal. He had the opportunity to sweat it back to Martinelli and the goalkeeper couldn't do anything about that. Tony Cruz then made it 2-0. It wasn't looking good. At that point, the big man was being kept pretty quiet. But then he had his moment to go through an on goal and then he did this. As if that wasn't bad enough, after a Virgil tackle, the ball just gravitated to his player's foot, played it in behind, and he got through to Alexis Sanchez, who made it 3-0. He was still trying to find a way through to goal. R9 with a roulette here, uh, bursting away, showing good pace, thinks over to Lloris, gets a shot off, and it's a fantastic save from his Allison. It was pretty much a done conclusion. R9 was shut out for most of the game, but he had one more opportunity to make something happen. Our opponent went through once more, and uh, despite our goalkeeper movement, we couldn't do anything or nil. Trent had the ball on the right, set it back to Cruz. Henri, we were working it well on the edge of the box. And if we needed any proof that it wasn't our day, that goal bound shot gets blocked by our own player. So that was the second game done and it didn't go the way we wanted it to. We needed to bounce back from this result and R9 was determined to do so as he got chopped down in the early moments of the game, picking up an injury. He was standing over the free kick but didn't look confident to shoot. We laid it off, played it to Figo, onto Trent and R9 let one fly. It tried to break his legs again with a foul not long before the half. In the 65th minute he had a free kick and an opportunity to finally get his goal. He lined it up and it went like this. After a lot of knocking on the door we probably scored one of the most pathetic goals in FIFA history. Getting into the late stages of the game, only at 1-0, we needed another goal and it finally came through R9. A little sweaty goal at the end and R9 got his goal. So there it is. We've compared Adriano and an R9. You guys let me know down in the comment section below who you think performed better in their separate games. Also, let me know, do you think if Adriano was fully focused, he could have reached the heights of R9 or could have just been one of the striker greats? Either way, it's sad to see that both kind of ended their careers early and uh, would have been nice to see them play for longer periods and who knows what we'd be saying about them. But yeah, on my overall opinion, I think today Adriano just edges it. I think his effectiveness in the game was a little bit more and he scored the nicer goals. So I'm going to give Adriano an 8.5 and unfortunately today R9 is going to get a 7. But yeah, guys, that is it. If you have enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button for me. Subscribe if you are new and let me know if you want to see more content like this in the future. Peace.